Hi there! Welcome to Ginger Foot Garden. So this is my backyard garden here in Maryland, Zone 7. This video is recorded in the middle of May and there's a lot going on in the garden but I wanted to take you for a tour in the garden before I make major changes. So this is a part of the garden that is the hardest for me to access so I have placed plants in there that doesn't require so much attention and because my garden is not fenced this area is very easily accessed by wildlife so I have placed plants in here that are more deer resistant or the plants that I don't really care if the wildlife would eat but I also use deer netting to protect the ones that I value the most so these two raised beds are from Vigo Garden and I love them so much. The quality is superb and they are built to last for years. I'll put the link in the description if you wanted to grab yours. So both these raised beds are covered by insect netting so that it will be protected from wildlife and pests just like cabbage moths. I practice dense planting, that's why you will see a lot of plants interplanted in each of these beds. And the reason for that is I want to maximize the space that I have. This year we also invested in getting a nice wheelbarrow so that I could mix in soil with a little bit more comfort. I have more cool weather vegetables that are growing in those tote planters and just like the raised beds, I have covered them as well with insect netting for pest management. I also have totes in here filled with ceilings that have been hardened off and are ready to go this month. I am quite a protective plant mama so I have to use deer netting in order to protect them from wildlife whenever I can't see my plant babies. So I have here my dishpan planters where I am also growing more brassicas and just like the other ones, I have protected them from cabbage moths by using insect netting. Creating a deterrent or barrier just like this insect netting, in my opinion, is the best pest control that you can do. It is the best way to do organic gardening without using harmful pesticides. Moving on to another part of the garden, I have here my buckets, grow bags, and more toad planters. So I planted some blackberries and raspberries in those 20 gallon grow bags. So I've also utilized layering by putting pots on top of pots in order to maximize my space. So I have here smaller pots of tomatoes and mint that are placed on top of the 20 gallon pots of raspberries. I have here peas that are growing in 3.5 gallon buckets and are trellised using stakes. I have a couple of native plants, perennials, annuals that I have packed in this little area where, uh, wherever they can fit in just those little space. I also have some brassicas that I have allowed to seed for the bees to have some food. So here I have more grow bags where I am growing some black eyed susans and comfrey and some other extra plants. It's still a work in progress, but we will get there eventually, right? So I'm gonna turn around and take you to a different side of the garden. So last year, I have created a support or a trellis system for the buckets that are in front of the greenhouse. Here's what it looked like now. As you can see, I have done a little bit of modification to fit my need. But if you recall, I have constructed this um, uh, plant support using garden stakes and stake arms and 
now i have all these plants that are surrounding and i wanted to change the setup eventually you'll see that in the coming video by the way so i plan to use um 3.5 gallon buckets in order to make it more uniform and because i think uh it's, it is just more sturdy so if you have noticed i have added this um netting and i attach it using the sea bites from thriving design i think this is the detail that was missing in the last setup that i have because some plants needed something else to climb on just like uh, this netting so i have m more ceilings in here that are ready to go and to be planted so moving on to the greenhouse uh, there's not that much left in here it's a bit messy because i have to move things around a lot and I have a little bit more ceilings left and for the most part it's just empty but these will be changed eventually you'll see it in the coming videos and I have here my ginger which I am so excited to harvest yeah ceilings everywhere that's just how it goes and this is my favorite color greens it's a perennial variety which is called purple tree colored there's gonna be a lot more changes that's gonna be happening in here as well and that that side those will be replaced eventually by 3.5 gallon buckets but for now I'm happy to see all this peas that are growing and will soon be climbing up that trellis and here are my blueberries that are growing in 20 gallon whisker barrel container I am so excited to see them and of course you know I also have to layer it. <laughs> and here comes the not so lovely part of the garden. There's so much mess in here, but we all have them, right? I'll be cleaning this up soon. And I also have some carrot seeds in here that will have to go out soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed this garden tour. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.